the way it often works, especially in Hollywood movies, but also in mm-hmm. TV shows and stuff, is they decide on like what the main points are of what they want to happen, right? Like first we want the characters to be here, and then we want this to happen, and this to ha- and that, that, and and you have this set of things. Imagine it as like points on a two D graph, right? And then your actual scenes in your shows are like how you interpolate between those points, right? And I think there's an inherent problem with that entire method of writing, which is it doesn't allow, um, or I won't even, I won't say allow, but it doesn't encourage, it doesn't encourage diversions from the interpolation, you know? Like, right. It's well. It's it's designed backwards, not designed forwards, yeah, as the, we've the, talked about before. Yeah. It, it doesn't. It doesn't encourage a certain kind of imagination to happen. Yes. Right. Whereas if you were instead like, I don't know what's going to happen. Right. Next. Yeah. What would happen if these guys were in the scene? You would. You would get ideas that just don't come the other way. Yeah. There's a there's a related but different thing, um, switching sort of to the way that I view movies. Right. Which is, when you build a plot around we have to get the MacGuffin or like the five infinity MacGuffins or whatever. Right. Um, That's just, it's an easy way that you get to play mad libs with the plot. Right. It's like you have this and this and that, and we just have to fill in the blanks. Yeah. Kind of like what I was saying about interpolating between points early on. Right. It's a, it's a well-known easy structure for that. And then you think your job as a writer is to just fill those in and then, and then you're done. Right. And the problem with that is, that's every other movie, right? And so if I'm looking for special insight, if I'm looking for something especially interesting or especially beautiful or especially intelligent, right? Um, it's probably not going to be a Mad Libs movie in part because the process of making one of those Mad Libs movies is not going to generate that in part because the people who have those insights are not going to want to make fucking Mad Libs movies, right? So maybe they can't make movies in the modern environment, but in part also because sometimes you break those things in the process of trying to fit them into the fricking Mad Libs, right? You like break off what's special about it, um, which I even have to worry about when making games. And it's yeah. something that, that I'm very, tend to be very worried about. Um, so, well, I, I guess I would push back on that slightly. And the only reason I say that is because Maybe that's true from the standpoint of if your goal is only to ever make movies that are transcendent in that way. Like the way that you're describing that is that it, spiritual is probably the wrong word, but it's like kind of similar. It's like you're actually asking for something that's sort of more like a spiritual communication where you're saying, here is something deep and meaningful and I'm communicating it via film because that's like the medium that I understand how to work with or something. But that's definitely a higher bar than competently made show. Yeah. But I don't, I don't mean and, to push it quite that far. Like that's, okay. that's the dimension that I appreciate the most. Right. And that's what, that's the kind of thing that I try to do. Right. But right. there are other things that are, that I wouldn't say fall into the spiritual category that are still, that I appreciate. So for example, like, you know, a classic thing to do in movies is the impressively long single shot where a bunch of cool stuff happens. And at that point, it's more like, it's more like you're doing an Olympic dive or something, right? Right, right. Where it's like, it's a very impressive thing to do. And I, I appreciate those two. Like sometimes I don't have enough education to appreciate those as fully as I should. But I do appreciate those in a certain in a certain way. Um, I do think they can be empty, but but sometimes in the act of being maximally good at a thing, you generate something beautiful in that act, right? Right. Even if that wasn't your intention. Right. You know what I mean? So like okay. like if you watch the best dancer in the world do a dance or something, right? Um, something is embodied there, even if even if they're just doing the thing that they know and they're just like i'm gonna go out and like do do my things that i've been practicing 20 years or whatever right right anyway um but so it just i don't i don't find that stuff usually in in these movies right and and movies are written increasingly in this way where it's just like filling in the blanks you know, and, well, and so, I, just, I see the blanks and then I see the thing. It's like, you know, when you read, when you see a Mad Libs page, 
it's like there's the typed out words and then there's the blanks yeah. and you like pencil in. Yeah. I can see the pencil and the typed out words and the blanks in all of yeah. these movies, right? Yeah. And I don't even make movies, so I don't know how people who watch movies can possibly or who make movies can possibly watch them or or TV shows. Well, I guess uh, so two things about that. The first thing I'll say about that is that I think you may actually be giving, you know, at least the Disney side of things too much credit by calling it a Mad Libs movie, though, <laughs> because that assumes that you actually wrote out some of the words ahead of time. And based on the limited experience I had watching their making of documentaries on Disney Plus, because I was curious about exactly this question, I was like, why is the writing in, in literally all Disney movies horrible? Um, they don't even have like major plot elements. They don't even know them until like many scenes have completed, like production. Well, that happened with Star Wars for sure. Right? Um, I don't know about other well, movies. 